The Symphony of High Dimensional Wisdoms by Mr. Liu Feng, translated by Bo Ai. About the author, Mr. Liu Feng, public speaker and disseminator of the Holistic Universe Theory, chairman of the advisory committee of Beijing Shifangyuan Outlay Hospice and Mind Care Center, chief expert of the America Holographic Institute of Life Sciences. Chief expert of the International Holographic Ecology Limited, the author of the best-selling book *Open Your High Dimensional Wisdom: Language Chinese*. During his 30 years of research, study, and application on the subject of general space-time energy, Mr. Liu Feng has dedicated himself to both the theoretical study and experiential exploration of all kinds of sapiens methods and spiritual groups with a total open mind. He interacts harmoniously with today's pluralistic world, with the basic principle of seeking the common and respecting difference. Mr. Liu has unscrambled and interpreted various mankind wisdom systems with a scientific logic, by which people with different backgrounds have been greatly inspired. Mr. Liu Feng is also an expert in corporation management with a seven-year top managerial experience in a high-tech company. Uplink Corporation of Silicon Valley. He had been through the whole process in the company from its very beginning to its IPO. He has also been a high-tech industrial consultant, President GOC, a managerial consultancy company, for more than six years. He led several high-tech companies and launched manufacturing plants in China. Mr. Liu Feng has been an architect of corporate culture for many enterprises and helped them adapt to future-oriented culture. Based on the combination of Eastern and Western wisdom. Praise, this book is the common intellectual wealth of mankind, an eternal bridge which connects each entity and the organization, a hub connecting all wisdom systems in our human society, and is the shared basic frequency in a harmonious symphony of multiculturalism in our society. I am grateful to the inner self for creating this opportunity, the Yuan. To meet with you through the development of this book, those who benefit the most will be those who participate. This is the common experience shared by practitioners of Xinnengyuan, Mr. Liu Feng. More than ten years ago, I saw Mr. Liu Feng's lectures on high dimensional wisdoms. In 2019, I came across a video of Mr. Liu Feng lecturing on infinite light and infinite life, and it struck a chord in my heart. I felt that lecture was specifically addressed to me. His meaningful words were a sound theoretical summary of what I had been practicing over the past twenty years. I wish this book to be a success, and more and more people will have the opportunity to benefit from Mr. Liu's teachings. Yi Sheng Zhao, Principal, Perth Wanqing Academy. In this world full of materialism, many people lose their way, don't understand the meaning of life, let alone the value of life. Sometimes I felt lonely. When I met Mr. Liu Feng, his research on the high dimensional wisdom of the universe suddenly penetrated my heart and made my life full of strength. I was at ease in my life, believing in perfection and no longer lonely. Do appreciate this opportunity to meet Mr. Liu Feng in your life, Pei Guo. The awareness dimension, level, disposition, and breadth of Mr. Liu Feng. Have all had a profound impact on my life. What is particularly precious to individuals and groups alike is the important direction provided by Mr. Liu Feng in his thirty years of multicultural system composition in the realm of inner growth groups. This book has afforded me tremendous help in the dimension of how scientific context can uplift awareness energy, and I will keep on studying it. Song Lin Liu, founder of Bingyi Wellness. Initiator of Holistic Wellness International Forum with Holistic Center Networks. I made Mr. Liu Feng's acquaintance ten years ago, and we co-founded the Shifangyuan Elderly Mental Care Charity Organization, providing mental care services for 14 million severely ill, terminal stage elderly in China. Mr. Liu Feng's theory system has made an impact on the life satisfaction of thousands of people. I look forward to the publication of the English version of the book. Tapping into higher dimensional wisdom, I believe it will connect with more people who are meant to be and awaken the satisfaction originating from life. Shu Gongfang, Director.
Beijing Shifangyuan Elderly Mental Care Center, Secretary General of the Beijing Shifangyuan Charity Foundation, Executive Director of China Life Care Association. Since the breakout of the COVID-19 pandemic in the beginning of 2020, we have seen a relationship between a community with a shared future for mankind and each person, and that no single nation, people, or individual can remain unaffected in this day and age. Mr. Liu Feng has spent 30 years seeking the common components in all of the wisdom systems he has had fortune to come into contact with, and forming this wisdom system of the fundamental principles of the universe. For this wisdom system, Mr. Liu Feng has not invented any peculiar names or terminologies, but has only borrowed from the universal and simplest scientific terms and logics. For the purpose of revealing the meaning of life to each being from the perspective of now, Li Weiwang. Lecture One: The Principle of the Ultimate Simplicity of the Universe, an Expedient Context for Linking All Human Wisdom Systems. I'd like to explain the overarching principle of my lectures. I'd like to name it to seek commonality and respect differences. This term differs from the Euro saying, which goes. To seek commonality and reserve differences, these two sayings are different, as the latter expresses subjectivity but maintains the narrator's position. The narrator of the formal expression is not clinging to a position, but rather respecting the reasonable existence of all things in time and space. In fact, in the past thirty years, when I explored a wisdom system, for example, a religion or a practice method, I held this saying as my overarching principle. When I explored all the wisdom systems, I tried to find and verify the commonalities among them, as mentioned above. When I respected the reasonable existence of all things in time and space and appreciated each system's unique characteristics, I could find the genuine beauty in the commonalities among them. And this process was a process full of joy and happiness. Therefore, today, after many years of experience and after combing through all the wisdom systems. I'm going to share with you the essence. Today, I'll start with the first lecture that I presented. The title is "The Principle of Ultimate Simplicity of the Universe." The subtitle is "An Expedient Context for Linking All Human Wisdom Systems." Why do I name it the principle of ultimate simplicity of the universe? In a universe where you now, there are endless systems defining wisdom, and more descriptions are emerging all the time. When one inwardly seeks to see his own heart and mind, and cultivates to a certain level, he realizes a lot of information that couldn't be realized in a three-dimensional world. Our usual environment, higher dimensional descriptions are multifaceted. Anyone could create a system, and each of the creators will face one problem: the problem of making his system known to others. New names and new terms need to be interpreted to ensure an obstacle-free understanding of the new system. The biggest problem among all these wisdom systems is their effective communication. Each wisdom system deems it has found the truth, and the followers of each wisdom system believe they have received great inspirations from the truth. In our world today, where we could see many wisdom systems moving forward in their pursuit. Communication and mutual verification among these wisdom systems become essential. Otherwise, one would feel confused when different language contexts meet, even though the same topic is being discussed. One would feel confused because of the adoption of varying logic, names, and terms. Of all the wisdom systems, the most universally applicable system in our modern world is the scientific context. Scientific context is a logic system collectively summarized from the developments of new knowledge in the past few hundred years. It has no connotation concerning ethnicity, nationality, politics, or religion. Why don't I name it just science? If I were to call it science, many paradoxes would appear, as different people have different views on science. There are relative limitations in the description of science in the public knowledge system domain. Therefore, I name it a scientific context, and I only want to borrow scientific names, terms, and logical relationships, because the public widely accepts them. For example, 
when I write one plus one equals on the ground. Almost everyone in the world would write two. Every system also has its complexity. When I looked for the commonalities, I found that commonalities are really clear. However, when trying to link up each system's simplicity to the simplicity or complexity of another system, it is rather tricky. Therefore. To explore the descriptions among different systems and verify them, and truly comprehend their core commonalities, is our lectures. Now let's discuss part one: the concept of multi-dimensional space. There are many systems for describing space in a scientific context. For example, there is the rectangular coordinate system, linear geometric systems, and there is the spherical coordinate system, polar coordinate system. Binary system, etc. Among these systems that describe the existence of space, there are formulas or interfaces for connections. However, I choose only the rectangular coordinate system, also known as the linear geometric system. Why do I choose this system? Because of all systems, this is the closest to our daily experience. When most of us studied mathematics, we understood this system. Multi-dimensional space system is a system that starts with the zeroth dimension, and it extends to the nth dimensions and approaches infinity. From a mass point to the nth dimensions and approaches infinity, the rectangular coordinate system is a good way for describing the entire universe. Nothing, no information or matter could be out of its coverage. In more detail, the zero dimension is a mass point, a particle. The single dimension is a straight line. The two dimensions form a plane, and the three dimensions create a space. In the zero dimensions, there is no variable; it is just a mass point in space. There is one variable in a single dimension, which in mathematics is often replaced with x. We call it the x-axis. Four arithmetic operations are performed on this axis: addition. Subtraction, multiplication, and division. The two dimensions form a plane that has two variables, x and y. In three-dimensional space, there are three variables, x, y, and z. This concept is familiar to most of us. When I talked to my friends about this concept twenty or thirty years ago, they found it hard to understand. Today, the term multi-dimensional space can be seen in many places. From psychology, cryptopsychism to modern culture, art, movies, and games, it is convenient for our discussions. The one, two, and three dimensions in mathematics correspond strictly to those in physics. This means nearly all physics questions end up abstractly as mathematical problems. Mathematics describes the relationship between numbers and forms. In the three-dimensional world. There is a strict correspondence between number and form. In our world, all activities could be summarized into a characteristic equation, a mathematical model. When we study computer programming, there is a word called modeling. That is finding the mathematical model within one subject. Find the model and then describe it. In three-dimensional space, we could discover endless proofs. However. Most people couldn't find any evidence in four-dimensional space. Maybe one would say four-dimensional space doesn't even exist. There is another explanation. Equipped as most of us are with three-dimensional cognitive and sensual capabilities, we are restricted by these abilities, just as an ant, an insect with only two-dimensional capabilities, is limited to the two-dimensional plane. When we use chalk. And draw an ant surrounded by a circle. There is no way for the ant to break away from this sealed, two-dimensional enclosure. We human beings have three-dimensional cognitive and sensual capabilities. When we are restricted by or are confined within a three-dimensional space, we can't leave the sealed, three-dimensional enclosure either. However, a being from a higher dimensional space could take objects from the closed three-dimensional enclosure. Even though this may sound supernatural, the theoretical logic is very sound. Why? Because with an increase in a dimension, 
there is one more variable. The mathematical theories behind all the operations never change. We know that there is only one variable on the number axis when doing arithmetic. When algebra is concerned, we adopt one special method, formula subtraction, when we need to interpret two variables. What is formula subtraction? It is the dimension lowering that turns the two-dimensional problem into a single-dimensional one. Through the comparative study of the three dimensions, we understand its precision. To continue the exploration, we search for the verification process in the higher dimensions. In a mathematical system, all dimensions from 0 to n and approaches infinity exist. If this is a logical assumption, there is no reason that this assumption only exists in up to three dimensions. Most of us couldn't verify higher dimensions because most of us only have three-dimensional cognitive and sensual capabilities. You can't break through three-dimensional space through three-dimensional activities. Human beings have been continually breaking through the way we think and expanding our limitations in the past centuries throughout our modern science development. However, we have been confined to our deep-rooted way of practice. We have been relying on eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body to understand the universe. Therefore, we have confined ourselves to a very narrow three-dimensional space. When the scientific domain of definition extended from three-dimensional space to n-dimensional space and approaches infinity, we realized the vastness and possibility of mutual understanding among the universe's wisdom systems. The most prevalent misunderstanding we still have is trying to solve high-dimensional problems in a three-dimensional mindset. Logically, this is quite ridiculous. Practice is the sole criterion for testing truth, a well-known saying by Chairman Mao. Yet, three-dimensional practice is the sole criterion for testing truth in three-dimensional space, and high-dimensional practice is the sole criterion for testing truth in high-dimensional spaces. It is impossible for people living in three-dimensional space to test the truth in higher-dimensional space, just as an ant couldn't test the truth in the world of human beings. Therefore, truly valuable practices are those that can be practiced in all spaces. The space we are talking about is a space ranging from zero to n dimensions, and approaches infinity. What are the differences between each space? In a one-dimensional world, there is an infinite number of points. In a two-dimensional world, there is an infinite number of lines. In a three-dimensional world, there is an infinite number of planes. From these, we could summarize a very simple concept. Namely, with the addition of one dimension, there will be infinitely times more information and correlations. This reveals one important possibility. With the increase of one additional dimension, there will be an infinite number more wisdoms of the universe. This could help us understand the differences in the descriptions of different wisdom systems in our world, as well as the huge differences between the current situations of human beings and those of the highest realm. Now let's talk about what exists in a space. To describe existence, we use a remarkably simple way. We call it to search for commonality. All the beings we see in a three-dimensional world are already too complicated. It is impossible for us to fully understand all existences in a material world in one's lifetime, let alone in the information age that we are now entering, in which even broader forms of existence are included. Happily, the search for commonality among material things can be accomplished by a relatively simple line of inquiry. To begin, we know that the commonality of all existence is the molecule. It is molecules that form all matter. To explore further, the commonality of molecules is an atom. Atoms form a molecule. An atom is composed of a nucleus and one or more electrons. Nuclei differ, and the electron is the commonality. A nucleus is composed of one or more protons and several neutrons, which is the commonality. A proton is composed of neutrons and positron, positive electrons. Thus, we find that all tangible matter is composed of three elementary forms of existence, 
neutron, positron, and negative electron. This could be regarded as corresponding to three produces all things, as the Tao De Jing has described it. These three particles are referred to as the three most elementary particles. The commonality among these three particles is the quantum property in the field of modern physics. The quantum property is the wave-particle duality. The commonality of the wave-particle duality is the energy wave. In other words, wave is the commonality of the wave-particle duality. So what is the nature of a particle? From the light wave theory and the theory of wave interference, we understand that the nature of a particle is interferometric imaging. Modern scientific research of electrons found that they are actually not physical particles, but wave packets. A wave packet is a short burst or envelope of localized wave action that travels as a unit. We also use the term standing wave to describe it. In other words, it is the relatively stable interferometric imaging of a wave in a space. Now we know when a wave forms the interferometric imaging of a standing wave in space, we can see its existence. This is called particle nature. In Buddhist scriptures, when describing the initial existence of this universe, the term se or form is used. With the interference of wave in action, interferometric imaging is formed. Namely, the nature of particles is visible. When the condition for the interference is not available, when there is no space phase to interfere with the sending wave, even with the presence of energy or an energy wave, the imaging would not be visible. This, in the Buddhist scriptures, is called void, or emptiness. Hence, often we see the text, Form is emptiness, emptiness is form. Emptiness is no other than form, form too is no other than emptiness. Further, they are not defiled, they are not undefiled, they are not deficient, and they are not complete. Now we have found the real commonality among all existence. We have covered energy waves already, and there are actually many types of energy waves. There are square waves, rectangular waves, triangle waves, etc., and various complex waveforms. What is their commonality? Through Fourier equation, we know that all complex energy waves and waveforms can be dissembled and decomposed, and eventually, the essence is the sine wave, sine x. Now we find that the sine wave is the real commonality. More interestingly, there is another name for the sine wave, a simple harmonic wave. In the traditional culture, there is a saying called Da Dao Zhi Jian, the great way is the ultimate simple one. Therefore, the simplest commonality of this universe is a sine wave. What is a sine wave called in the Buddhist scriptures? Thought, to give rise to a thought. In Buddhism, we say one thought is one being. According to the Buddhist doctrines, when we try to understand the universe's existence, we learn that it is a congregation of beings, and every single being results from a thought. In Taoism, the sine wave is called Tai Ji, which has two parts, the yin and the yang. There are two parts to a sine wave. The upper part is the yang, the positive, and the lower part is the yin, the negative. In information technology, we call it unit information, which is also a sine wave. The amplitude, the wavelength, or the frequency, and its position and phase in space form an information unit, which is the most basic information, a sine wave. In traditional Chinese culture, the image of a dragon resembles the shape of sine waves. Therefore, when we say we're descendants of a dragon, it is very scientific, because all existence comes from the sine wave, namely from the dragon. When we study energy waves, we usually pay attention to the amplitude, namely its intensity as well as its frequency, wavelength and color, etc. By so doing, we overlook a very important concept, the dimensions of the sine wave or energy wave. When the concept of space mentioned before is included in a study, we could easily think of dimensions of energy waves, that is the degrees of flexibility of the energy waves. One dimensional energy is line-based, two-dimensional energy is plane-based, while three-dimensional energy is cube-based. When it comes to fourth dimension, it transcends time and space. Therefore, the dimensions of the energy wave is more important than its intensity. Under Euro circumstances, most people ignore the concept of space, 
yet focus their attention on the frequency and its intensity. This is why, when the modern New Age movement try to describe the relationship between mind and energy, they often use the concept of frequency, because frequency is described based on the understanding of waves in three-dimensional space. Frequency is actually a function of time. It is the number of vibrations in unit time. The concept of frequency restricts us, however, because its relationship with time was confined to the concept of time as a constant factor. This is why it can't really describe the energy relationship in the higher realms. So, what is the energy relationship in the higher realm? In other words, what is the relationship across different dimensions? I found that it was actually a projection relationship. It was very simple. One dimension is the projection of two dimensions. Two dimensions is the projection of three dimensions. Three dimensions is the projection of four dimensions, and n minus one dimensions is the projection of n dimensions. N approaches infinity. Once we understand this projection relationship, we would have a complete understanding of the existence of the entire universe. Why? Because we have discovered this vertical logical relationship. And this relationship can be connected totally with all the wisdom systems of human beings, according to an energy wave's transmission characteristics. Another important concept is that any energy wave can be spread throughout the universe. It is a stone thrown into a pond, and the ripples extend throughout the entire pond. To put it simply, any energy wave would reach the whole universe, and we know that everything is an energy wave. Let's consider the reverse action. Take a single mass point in the universe as an example. Any energy wave that ripples across the entire universe would go past this point. The information contained in the energy wave, for example, frequency, amplitude, etc., would affect this point. From this, we come to this simple concept: any mass point in the universe contains all information in the universe, and the relationship among all points. This is called the law of cosmic holography. This somehow reflects a very important saying uttered by Buddha Sakyamuni when he reached enlightenment: "All sentient beings have the Sathagata's wisdom and virtue." It also reflects the Taoist principle that Tao is at any place and at any time, even to the effect that Tao is in the urine and the shit. One single mass point contains the universal wisdom in n dimensions of space. When we have such understanding, we would understand. That the descriptions of space and energy, the zero dimension or the n dimension, and the process infinity are the same thing. They all contact the entirety of information and the relationship among them. The evolution of all things in the universe happens among the zero dimension or the n dimension space, and the process infinity. Even though they might be the two extremes of dimensions, they are one entity. The Chinese character Tai, great, grand, extreme. It's a very good and simple description of the universality of all information. To write the word Tai, we only need to write the word Da, big, and then put a dot at the lower inner part. Hence, we have this word Tai, a dot within the great space. With the above explained, I have presented the core messages in my lectures. The language and the names, terms, and logical relationships used are nothing I have created. They have been in the public domain for the past couple of hundred years. I have only extended the usage and linked them up, and found a simple commonality and law among them. The system I use now can relate to and be verified by all other wisdom systems in human society. In the past thirty years, I have been using this wisdom system to communicate with practitioners and teachers of other religions and spiritual systems, and have found it very convenient. I don't have to worry about the differences in context, and I can easily find a link among all wisdom systems, while preserving the unique, excellent features of each of them. I realize that higher realms in the universe are one entity. In Buddhism, a Buddha is a person who has achieved unsurpassed right enlightenment. Only the n dimension and the process infinity can be called unsurpassed. Only when the wisdom covers the n dimension and approaches infinity can knowledge be called unsurpassed. In Taoism, the ultimate highest realm is Wu Ji, no extreme. Only when it covers the knowledge in the n dimension and approaches infinity can it be called unsurpassed. In theology, God is the name for it. 
as it is unique, and only the nth dimension n approaches infinity can be called unique. When it comes to n minus 1 dimension, there are infinite numbers, and since the nth dimension is also the projection of all things, it is the ultimate dominant figure of all things. These would all fit the definition of a god. In the lectures that follow, I will show you all the logical links in different categories, and I will show you the applications of all these in our daily lives.